Hi, I'm Gwilym Harris Evans and I'm a yacht surveyor working in Portugal and South Atlantic Spain. And in this video I'm going to be talking you through some of the aspects of the underwater survey of a fibreglass yacht. This is a sovereign quantum humidity meter. It's a capacitance type meter which is more accurate than the analogue meters we used to use in the past. Before I take any readings I, I can calibrate this unit every time before use. It will also give me humidity, dew point, air temperature, surface temperature and deep and shallow moisture within the laminate itself. So I can, I can know whether the conditions are good for taking readings or not. And I can toggle from here between deep and shallow readings like that. And we're about to look at a westerly which has been in the Caribbean for probably four or five years and has been afloat the whole time. There are clearly some blisters which are probably osmotic in origin which the previous owner has locally patched and filled. Moisture levels here in some areas are slightly lower, possibly because this is the side of the hull that faces both the prevailing wind in this area and the track of the sun as it arcs around during the day. And that does have an effect on how long it takes the hull to dry out. If I find some blisters, <coughs> were I to find some fluid in the blisters, I'd be testing that for its pH level and for the distinctive vinegary acetic acid smell of the solids which indicate that osmotic activity is, is going on. If there are some blisters but the damage doesn't extend beyond the gel coat into the laminate, then this isn't necessarily a structural problem. So the word osmosis doesn't necessarily spell real difficulties for the hull. But we'll look at the, any blistering we find later. Okay, we're, we're looking at two specific blisters here on this hull, which have been filled before, probably by a previous owner. You can see some more in this area here. It's hard to say how far they extend into the laminate, but looking at the depth, looking at the depth of the blisters, of, of the blisters it does appear that they do extend into the laminate. There, is, there are indications here of fluid running down the hull, which, given the extremely high temperatures here at the moment, has dried out. But <coughs> with this spike, I can find more fluid, which has the distinctive acetic acid odour of solutes, which indicate osmosis. We'll do some more investigation on this boat, but uh, the owner does intend at least stripping back of the gel coat in its entirety, at which stage we'll have a clearer idea of the state of the laminate. Here I'm scraping the bronze skin fittings back to bright metal, just to see whether there's any dezincification, because when the zinc comes out of the bronze or DZR alloy, it loses much of its strength. You can see there's no pink sheen to, to this skin fitting, which means it's okay. Once the process starts, it accelerates quite rapidly and the fitting loses most of its strength over a comparatively short period and must be replaced. It would be an expectation of the insurance, of your insurers that it's done. In a similar way to the investigation of the skin fittings, we now look at the other underwater metal. This is this is the P bracket, which is which is also in bronze, and we want to to ensure that it's 
it's tight to the hull and that we can't see any evidence that, that, that it's loose where, where it enters the hull moulding here. Seems fine. Then we, we scrape back again to bright metal. You can see that this has a, a typical bronze sheen. None of the quite distinctive pink that you can see when the zinc has begun to leach from the P bracket. The, the P bracket is under considerable load, so if there's any suspicion that that's de de-zinking, then uh, we'd have to call for its, for its replacement. This one's fine. There's a nice, nice and expensive folding prop on this boat. We're looking at that to see that the mechanism works smoothly, which it does. And then we'll scrape the blade, the blades in the same way. And again, we're looking to scrape sufficiently to see that nice bronze sheen there. We'll look at the boss in the same way. It's important at this point not to be confused if someone has used red anti-fouling because you can have some red residue left from the red anti-fouling and we wouldn't want to condemn an expensive pro propeller on that basis. This one looks fine. I notice that there's no anode here at the moment and it's looking at the, uh, the growth here, I think the anode disappeared some time ago. So we're quite fortunate that uh, there's been no damage to the prop as a result because it's, it's very important that an expensive bronze prop should be protected by the right anode. Okay, so we'll, we'll move on to look at the rudder. Think about the bearings first. This is quite a deep rudder, so we use the leverage of the rudder to see whether the bearings in the hull have any play. They don't in this case. We're also, we, we move the rudder to full lock, and we're looking to see, it's difficult, but we're looking to see whether we can feel, or in some cases see, any movement between the blade of the rudder itself and the stock because if the rudder deteriorates internally and the tangs, the steel tangs internally that are welded to the stainless steel stock, if those welds fail, perhaps due to age, water penetration, serious broaching, damage by grounding, then the blade can become loose from the stock and of course that's a serious condition. So we, we test that against the rudder stock and see whether we can detect any movement. And this is fine. We'll do it on the other lock as well. And that's okay. There are some indications of osmosis in this rudder. There's a blister here with some osmotic fluid. Moisture readings in rudders are always high because they're a closed system, they have a foam core or sometimes a built-up timber core and if there is any moisture then it's likely to be at a higher level than the hull itself. That's not necessarily a problem so long as the rudder remains structurally secure. And on this vessel that's more or less it for the underwater metal apart from the biggest lump which is the keel. What we're looking for with the keel very occasionally you'll find severe corrosion to a ballast keel, to a cast iron ballast keel. That's unusual. This is a cast iron ballast keel. What we're looking for is, is it tight to the hull? You can see where it joins to the, to the moulded stub on the hull itself. You can see the joint. And this will often be fared with filler. And you can see that this, this is fared with filler over a, a fair amount of its, of its length. We're looking for it to be tight to that stub. There may be some gaps here because this, this is after all a casting and this is a fiberglass moulding and to, to some extent the joint isn't perfect so there may be some gaps. What we're looking for are not the kind of gaps that are indicated by the keel itself being loose. So going up to the forward end of the keel we can see there's a 
there's a little gap in the filler here but but essentially all structures will flex and this will have been filled probably with a hard filler in fact we can see that it has been in this case and that will have flexed that doesn't indicate any structural problem were we to go inside the vessel we'd be looking at the keel studs we'd be looking at the backing plates we'd be checking that the nuts are tight We'd, looking for, we'd be looking for any indication of water ingress via the studs to the inside of the vessel. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found it informative. Be aware that the word osmosis isn't that scary. Almost all laminated structures will eventually suffer some osmosis and many boats are sailing quite happily with the early indications of osmosis for a number of years without that having any structural implications or even necessarily a severe effect on their value. Should you need a survey in, in, in Atlantic Spain or Portugal, I'd be happy to oblige, and the links are at the end of this video. I belong to an organisation called British Marine Surveyors Europe, and if you go to their website, you'll find that I have fully qualified and, and insured colleagues in most of Europe and, and the UK who can oblige you with a survey, with evaluation, either, either for insurance purposes or pre-purchase. Thank you very much.